أكبر الله أكبر بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين Today inshallah we're going to be speaking about the month of Shawwal This is uh, the series that we began at the beginning of the Islamic year going through the different Islamic months and each Islamic uh, month which begins uh, we go through those uh, months and the virtues of those months and today inshallah which is corresponding to the 4th of Shawwal we're going to be of course speaking about the month of Shawwal the virtues of the month of Shawwal the benefits of this month the origins of this month and we'll also speak about uh, significant events which took place in the month of Shawwal throughout Islamic history and of course the month of Shawwal is after the month of Ramadan we've all uh, been observant in our ibadah in this blessed month which has uh, passed us by and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he accepts all of our siyam and our qiyam and qiyam and qiyam and the blessed month of Ramadan which has passed and that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes the means of us to be able to enter Jannah and that Allah Azza wa gives us the ability to be able to continue our good deeds after Ramadan and Shawwal, <coughs> as we'll see, is a good opportunity for all of us to be able to continue some of those uh, good deeds uh, as we'll mention inshallah but where does the word Shawwal come from? what does the word Shawwal uh, mean? what's the origin of this word? a lot of the meanings of this word, uh, the word Shawwal they come from uh, the meaning or words revolving around the meaning of something being raised up something being raised or something going up or something being raised and there's different reasons as to why this uh, name was given to this month we've spoken previously about why names were given to months it could have been because of things which would happen uh, at that time of the year uh, in those days possibly before the days of Islam in the days of Jahiliyyah for, for most if not all of these months and it said that uh, it was called Shawwal after the drying up of the camel's milk. So we said that one of the meanings is when things are raised up. Another meaning or another suggestion that's mentioned by historians is that it's referred to, uh, sh and the month is called Shawwal after the drying up of the camel's milk, which in Arabic is called Tashweel. And so they say Shawwal comes from the word uh, Tashweel. And this is what happens to the camels uh, when the heat becomes intense and there's no longer any dates on the palm tree. So they used to call it Tashweel when the camels look used to dry up. And they say that this is why the month is called Shawwal from the word Tashweel. Uh, also, it said that the female camel would stay away from the male camel. And they would call it Shalat and Naqa. Naqa is about the camel. Shalat and Naqa. That the camel would basically stay away from it. Uh, and the word shala also refers to the raising up of the tail. So the raising up of the tail, shala tenaqa, that would suggest that uh, the female camel would lift its tail as a sign that it's now expecting. It's, 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 it's been impregnated, it's pregnant with, with babies. And so it would raise its tail. And so they say this is where the word shawal comes from, meaning to be, to be raised up. And the Arabs they would have superstitions. Uh, before Islam, they had lots of superstitions. Uh, and because of some of these origins of, uh, of uh, the Arabs with regard to this month, they were superstitious about getting married at this time. So this is pre-Islam. They would be superstitious about getting married at this time. And they would say that the bride uh, should keep away from her groom, just like the she camel stays away from the male camel. So they would say there's maybe some reason why the male camel and the female camel stay away from each other during this time and so they would basically uh, associate that with you know good luck and bad luck and they would also say likewise the groom and the bride should also be staying away from each other they shouldn't get married uh, at that point in time and so again you know this is of course superstitious superstitious has no basis uh, in islam and even the prophet وسلم, he declared this superstition to be false and Aisha she speaks about this and she says that the Messenger of Allah married me in Shawwal and it was consummated in the month of Shawwal and which of his wives was more favored by him than me so Aisha in this hadith in Sahih Muslim she is speaking against this superstitious act the superstition of getting married at this time of the year uh, because 
Of course, she's saying the Prophet himself married me in Shawwal. And we consummated the marriage in Shawwal, and I was the, the most beloved wife to him. So it doesn't make sense if that was the case. He, would, he wouldn't have married me at this point in time. So there's lots of um, things which are mentioned uh, from the origins. They also say, thamar was zuruq that the fruits and the plantations and the vegetation jaffat fi shahab that they dry up in this month. Uh, so they say, فَالْخَيْرُ فِيهِ يَرْتَفِعُ And so the, the goodness is increased. Meaning, the, the time of, 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 ripe, of, of the, the time for these fruits to be, to be ripe and to be ready to be picked uh, is, is, is at this time of the month or this time of the year. And so the khair in this uh, time of the year increases. So these are some of the uh, things which are mentioned with regards to the history of the month of Shawwal. What are the virtues of the month of Shawwal? First of all, it's one of the months of Hajj. It's one of the months of Hajj. Allah says, al hajju Ashhurum Ma'lumat. Allah says, Hajj is a, uh, a number of known months. Hajj is known months. So, what does this mean? It means that a person can perform ihram or get into the state of ihram and make his way to Mecca make his way to Mecca with the intention to perform Hajj in this month starting from this month so of course Ramadan he can't make the intention to go for Hajj but in this month he can make the intention to go for Hajj uh, he can make the intention for Hajj in Shawwal he can travel to uh, Mecca and he can stay there. Of course, in the older days, people would travel, you know, two or three months before Dhul Hijjah, before the month in which Hajj takes place, so that they could arrive there in, in good time or arrive there on time, if, especially if they were traveling from, you know, the other side of the Islamic world. So, Al Hajj Ashrul Ma'lumat, Hajj are uh, specific months, and one of those months, Shawwal, Dhul Qa'ada, and Dhul Hijjah, or the 10 days of. Dhul uh, Hijjah, because of course the 11th day is uh, past the day of Arafah. So, Ihram cannot be made before the month of Shawwal. But Ihram can be made from this month onwards if a person intends to perform Hajj. The earliest he can intend to perform Hajj is in the month of Shawwal. He can go to Mecca and he can be in a state of Ihram and he can stay there until uh, the days of Hajj in the month of Dhul Hijjah. Of course, in the olden days, as we said, you know, people would travel. It might take two or three months to get to Mecca. Let's say if you're traveling from Andalusia, Spain, for example, we are traveling from Indonesia, okay, all those years ago, uh, there weren't any uh, planes or trains or cars, and so it might take them two or three months to travel, and, you know, they will travel possibly in Shawwal, and they will come and arrive in uh, Mecca in the month of the Hijjah to be prepared for the month of uh, Hajj, and to be prepared for the rites of Hajj. So it's one of the months of Hajj. <coughs> also, the famous hadith of the Prophet, alayhi salatu wasalam, of fasting the six days of Shawwal, something which I'm sure many of us uh, are familiar with. And inshallah we'll talk about some of the benefits and virtues and fawaid from this, uh, from these ahadith related to the six days of Shawwal. The Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, the famous hadith, Man Saba Ramadan, Thumma Atba'ahu, will fast Ramadan, then follows it up, Bisimti Min Shawwal, with six days of Shawwal, Fakada Kasiyamu Daha. It's as if he has fasted for a lifetime. This is the famous hadith of Sahih Muslim and Sunnah Bidawud and other books of hadith also. What is the benefit of uh, this being legislated in the month of Shawwal? Well, first of all, it's for a person to realize that fasting isn't just for the month of Ramadan. When you hear this hadith, it makes you realize, okay, fasting isn't just something I should be doing in the month of Ramadan, it's something that I should also be doing outside of the month of Ramadan. It's an act of worship, just like Salah, just like Zakah. I mean, Hajj has its specific days, but fasting doesn't. You don't have to uh, exclusively fast in the month of Ramadan only. And of course, we know from the Acts of the Prophets that they would fast on other days. But the point is, it makes us understand fasting is something which we can do even after the month of Ramadan has finished. Another benefit is that when you start to fast in Shawwal, you're continuing some of those good deeds which you started in Ramadan. So you were fasting in Ramadan, and now you're continuing the fasts 
to a certain extent after the month of Ramadan has finished in the month of Shawwal. So the month of Shawwal begins and a person has the intention to fast for six days, he's already used to fasting, he is continuing some of those good deeds. And of course we mentioned before the importance of step the khutbah here, so we spoke about the importance of trying to continue to, you know, whatever extent we can, try and continue some of the good deeds that we did in Ramadan. And fasting is one of them. And this is a perfect way. You know, the six days of Shawwal is a perfect way for a person to be able to continue that habit of fasting. So it's good for a person to start fasting in the month of Shawwal, uh, continue this good habit, also with the intention of <coughs> doing more fasts after the day, after the days, uh, six days of Shawwal, in Shawwal, after Shawwal, maybe until the next Ramadan, having a habit of fasting uh, throughout the year as per uh, the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Now, why six days specifically? Why does the Hadith mention six days? One of seven, for example, there's lots of things which mention seven, you know, seven uh, circuits around the, uh, the Kaaba, for example, seven circuits between Safa and Marwa. You know, sometimes the number seven has its um, uh, a hadith which mentioned that number specifically, or five, for example. But six is quite specific. Why specifically six days? Why not one week, for example? There's another hadith, which is an interesting hadith, where the Messenger of Allah he said, whoever fasts for six days after Eid al-Fitr, meaning after the first day of Shawwal, which is Eid al-Fitr, it's not permissible for a person to fast on the day of Eid al-Fitr. Whoever fasts for six days after Eid al-Fitr, has completed the year. Has completed the year. Meaning it's as if he is fasted for the whole of the year. Another hadith says Allah has made for each hasana ten like it. Meaning for every good deed, it's multiplied ten times. He gets the reward of ten. So a person does a fast, for example, he fasts one day, it's multiplied by ten. He gets the reward as if he fasted for 10 days. So that's with regards to uh, a person fasting. Uh, um, after inshallah, I'm going to be eating here when I'm after yeah. the club. Yeah. So Allah has made for each hasana 10 like it. So a month of fasting, if you're getting 10 good deeds for each day that you fasted, how many months would that be equivalent to? 10 months. Ten months. Because you're getting 10 good deeds for each fast. And you're fasting for 30 days. And so those deeds are multiplied by, by 10. So 30 days of fasting multiplied by 10 equals 300. So when a person fasts the month of Ramadan, it's equivalent to him fasting for 300 days, for 10 months, based on this hadith. Then the Prophet he said, fasting six days completes the year. So after Ramadan, which is like fasting ten months, the Prophet is properly of course, fasting six days after that completes the year. How does that complete the year? Because again, the same thing. Six days, if you're rewarded for each day times ten, you do six times ten, which is sixty. So three hundred days. It's as if a person has fasted when he fasts the month of Ramadan and then when he fasts six days of Shawwal, it's as if he fasted 60 days. So 300 plus 60 is 360, so it's as if you fasted for the whole year. So this is the wisdom behind why the six days of uh, Shawwal are mentioned explicitly by the Messenger of Allah and there may be uh, other benefits Allah knows best. It's also narrated by Ibn Khuzayma with the wording, a similar, a similar hadith, fasting for the month of Ramadan brings the reward of 10 like it. And fasting for six days brings the reward of two months. And that is the fasting of the whole year. So a person when he fasts these six days, it's as if he's fasted for the whole of the year once he has done the, the, the month of Ramadan uh, completely. So again, it really shows us first of all the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, how easy it is for a person to do good deeds, how Allah azza wa jalla when you do a good deed, multiplies that good deed, for our sake, for our benefit, as a sign of his mercy and generosity. <coughs> and also, it's a means by which a person can continue those good deeds as we mentioned. So when can you start fasting? 
When can you start fasting the days of Shabbat? Second, Second day of Shabbat. First day, it's not permissible. It's haram for a person to fast on the day of Eid. So the days of Eid is something which is impermissible. It's our days of celebration. After the first day of Shawwal, it's permissible for a person to uh, fast the days of Shawwal, the second, third, fourth, uh, until the end of Shawwal. Uh, can he fast them consecutively? Yes. Meaning in a row? Yes. Yes. Yeah, you can. There's no, uh, there's no prohibition uh, for a person to fast, for example, uh, the six days of Shawwal consecutively if he wishes to. If a person, for example, wanted to fast uh, Mondays and Thursdays, can he combine the intention of fasting on Mondays and Thursdays, which is a sunnah of the Prophet Sallam, along with making the intention of fasting six days of Shawwal? Yeah. Yeah. They can also do that as well. So a person can fast Monday, which is uh, the day after tomorrow, the Saturday, he can fast on Monday and then the, the Thursday, and then continue that same pattern uh, throughout the month. And then after Shawwal, the Qa'ada, you can do the same thing, you carry on. Mondays and Thursdays, just keep on getting into a routine of fasting Mondays and Thursdays is something good. Uh, there is no, Allah knows best, any preference. To be honest, it's based on the individual. So, uh, some of the du'at, some of the scholars, they would mention, for example, uh, to enjoy these initial days of Shawwal, the first few days. You know, based on narrations which mention that these are days of, the days of, uh, days of Eid, are days of eating and drinking. Uh, to take a break, to distinguish between uh, Ramadan and Shawwal, etc. But if a person wants to start on the second of Shawwal and uh, start straight through, nothing wrong with that either. It all goes back down to his intentions, you know, back to his mindset. Uh, for example, some people they might want to start on the second of Shawwal because they want to do the second, third, fourth, or all the way to the eighth. They want to do like six in a row. As soon as eight finishes, Second of Shawwal, they just want to start. And they want to do them straight away, six in a row. But what's their intention? They just want to get over and done with. I want to finish my six days of Shawwal, get over and done with. Then I just want to relax and start eating and drinking back to normal. You know, eat and drink like I do until next Ramadan. I don't have to worry about fasting again. So again, it depends on the mindset. And of course, that wouldn't be the best thing because, you know, as we said, from the benefits of fasting, the six days of Shawwal, is that you're continuing uh, fasting on a regular basis. But, again, it's not like it's haram. If a person wants to do this, but it, again, it's supposed to be a means by which you're gaining closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. However you're able to do that, that's something which is, uh, which is fine. <coughs> Another issue which arises is... In the month of Ramadan, let's say somebody was not well, somebody was ill, he wasn't able to fast, and then he has to make them up after Ramadan. And let's say, for example, 15 days of Shawwal go by, and he hasn't fasted the days he's missed of Ramadan, and he missed 10 days of Ramadan. So it's the 15th of Shawwal and he's looking back thinking I need to make up those 10 days of Ramadan and he missed 10 days. But also he's thinking I need to, I want to fast the 6 days of Shawwal. Which one does he do first? Because now he's in a problem. Because if he does the 10 days that he missed in Ramadan what day is it going to finish? 25th. And then he won't be able to do six days of Shawwal because you don't have 31 days in, 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 in Islamic months. It's either 29 or 30 days. <coughs> so what do we do? Do the Shawwal first. Six days of Shawwal first. Okay, but the, the hadith, it mentions, whoever fasts Ramadan, then follows it up with the six days of Shawwal. Now this is an issue which the scholars have spoken about in lots of detail. And there's different caps. There's some uh, of the opinion of, of what you just mentioned. They've said you complete the six, you complete uh, 
But they say, some say you complete the, the days of Ramadan fast. Even if you have less time. Others, they say, no, you, do the six, you can do the six days of Shawwal fast. Then you do the month uh, of Ramadan that you have left over. Even if that means, even if that means, for example, you, you, you uh, don't do it in order. The hadith uh, says literally, whoever fasts Ramadan, then follows it up with Shawwal. <coughs> okay, so the issue here, just in case people are not understanding, the problem here is some of the scholars, they take this hadith, uh, you could say literally. And then they say, what does it mean by whoever has completed or whoever has fasted the days of Ramadan, the month of Ramadan? Because if you miss 10 days, and now you're making up for Ramadan, the argument that the scholars have is, is this considered to be the fasts of Ramadan? Because they're not being done in Ramadan anymore. They're being done in Shawwal, for example, or Dhul Dhul Hijjah, whatever. Others will say, no, but these are the Qada of Ramadan. You're making up for Ramadan. So they are from the fast of Ramadan. And so those who say, no, they are from the fast of Ramadan, they say you have to make them up fast. Then you have to fast the days of Shawwal. But the issue, like we just mentioned, what happens, for example, if you're on the 25th day, you just completed your qada of Ramadan, you don't have enough time for shawwal. The scholars, Allah, and Allah knows best, like we said, this is a, uh, an issue and a, a, a differing among scholars going back uh, you know, for, for decades and for centuries, since the early days. Allah knows best, but the hadith suggests that you fast the days of Ramadan first. So if that means you have to make up for the days of Ramadan, after Ramadan, then you do those first, and then you fast the days of Shawwal, even if you don't end up doing them, you tried your best. Meaning you did whatever you could. And like we said, the, the issue isn't something which is stringent, scholars have differed. Some of the scholars, like we said before, they do the days of Shawwal first, and then they say you can do the days of Ramadan after. Why can you do the days of Ramadan after? <coughs> because Qada of Ramadan, you can do until the following Ramadan, it's not an issue. But the days of Shawwal are specific. So again, there's leniency in this issue. The main thing is that a person does his Qada of Ramadan before next Ramadan, and that a person does the six days of Shawwal in the days uh, of Shawwal, and inshallah he'll get the reward. And as long as he tries his best and makes the effort, then inshallah he'll get the reward because of the effort that he made, and Allah knows a person's, uh, Allah knows a person's intentions. So uh, that's with regards to what should a person do. And we already mentioned when you can fast. You can fast on Mondays and Thursdays. You can fast consecutively if you wish from the second of Shawwal onwards. Uh, you can fast on other days if you wish, of course, with the exception of uh, Fridays. But again, the six days of Shawwal, uh, it's a good way for us to be able to continue the fasts after the month of Ramadan, inshallah. So we'll speak now about the incidents that took place in the month of Shawwal throughout Islamic history. In the fifth day or the fifteenth day of the month of Shawwal in the third year of the Hijrah a significant event took place what was this event? third year of the Hijrah in the month of Shawwal battle of not Badr Badr was the year before it was the next battle battle of Uhud so the battle of Badr was in which month? Ramadan. 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 The last men standing at Uhud were who? The Muslims. The Mushrikeen were the ones who left the battlefield. Some say it was a draw because the Muslims uh, had casualties, the non-Muslims had casualties. There was no decisive victor. And some say, of course, it was a defeat because of the uh, 
the, the number of casualties inflicted upon the Muslims compared to the non-Muslims. But the point is, it's always benefits and virtues when it comes to the Battle of Bukhari. Uh, number two, the Battle of the Trench also took place in the month of Shawwal. So in the 50th of the Hijrah, the 50th of the Hijrah, the Battle of Khandaq took place, the Battle of the, uh, the, battle of the Trench, uh, also known as Ghatwat al Ahzab. Uh, this took place two years after the Battle of Uhud, uh, and of course this was between the Muslims and all of the Arabs. Ahzab literally means parties or tribes or confederates. They all allied together, all the Arabs, to fight against the Muslims or the Muslims of Arabia. And the Battle of the Trench was a victory for the Muslims. The goal of trying to destroy all the Muslims and kill them all uh, wasn't successful by the disbelievers. And the Muslims were victorious. The famous trench that was dug around Medina at the advice of Saman al-Farsi was something which was used as a tactic at the Battle of the Trench. And uh, the Muslims were victorious. And that's also something which took place in the month of Shawwal. Uh, also from the incidents was the death of one of the wives of the Prophet uh, Sauda bint Zam'a. Sauda bint Zam'a. Sauda radiallahu anha was from the early Muslims, from the early people to accept Islam. And she made the hijrah uh, along with her husband to Abyssinia. And she was the first person after her husband passed away to marry the Prophet والسلام, after the Prophet والسلام's wife Khadija radiallahu anha passed away. So Sauda radiallahu anha was the first person the Prophet ﷺ married after the death of Khadija radiallahu anha. And this was either just prior to the Hijrah or just after the Hijrah. Some say it was prior to the Hijrah because of her being in Abyssinia. And there's a famous story which is mentioned uh, about uh, Sauda radiallahu anha. She was older in age. She was somebody who was older in age. And the narrations mention that she gave, because the Prophet ﷺ would have nights, uh, for each of his wives. And so it said that Sauda radiallahu anha gave up her night uh, and gave it to Aisha radiallahu anha. She gave it to Aisha radiallahu anha and she didn't want what the other wives wanted from the Messenger of Allah because she was obviously older in age. And, uh, you know, she mentions uh, that she wanted to be raised up uh, as uh, one of the wives of the Prophet ﷺ on the Day of Judgment and she wanted that reward on the Day of Judgment for her sacrifice, etc. And this is something which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, mentions in the Qur'an. Allah mentions this incident of Sauda radiallahu anha giving up her night. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Nisa Allah says if a woman fears indifference or neglect from her husband there is no blame on either of them if they seek fair settlement and uh, fair settlement is best. And uh, Sauda radiallahu anha uh, gave up her night without any issues, uh, of course, uh, for her, without any concern from her side or from the side of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa And so they, there, was, there was this uh, re reconciliation and she gave the night to Aisha radiallahu anha and she passed away uh, in uh, this uh, in this month also. So these are some of the events which took place in the month of Shawwal and this was just you know, an overview of the month of Shawwal. Most importantly brothers and sisters we need to try to be consistent to whatever capacity we can uh, to continue some of those good deeds that we began in the month of Ramadan in the month of Shawwal Allah is facilitating for us to be able to fast in this month so that we can continue some of those good deeds uh, after Ramadan insha'Allah and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he gives us the ability to be able to continue those good deeds uh, post Ramadan uh, and inshallah if there's any questions then I'll do my best to answer them inshallah any questions? Uh, I had a question regarding praying the six days of Shawwal before fasting. Yeah, yeah fasting excuse me before the Qada of Ramadan um, was that regarding what is like valid, it's it's not battle to do that, or is it khilaf al awwal, or is it? So, the scholars when they spoke about this uh, this issue, they were differing opinions. 
and uh, there's khilaf on the issue, some of them would, would take the issue literally. And so they would say that because these are fasts that, you took, that, are, that, are, and that need to be made up for in the month of Ramadan itself, uh, they have to be done first before the sixth day of Shawwal can be applied. So it was considered something that was necessary. They considered it to be a, con a condition. So the scholars who take, this, who take the position that you can, they still follow the general rule that you don't do a sunnah before you do a fatah. Yeah. They just say it's it's it doesn't make it batil, but it's still khilaf al Yeah. Okay. Essentially. Okay, thank you. Okay, Zakum da Khir Subhanakallah Hum Bihdika Shadullah Ilaha Illa Sakhrika Watu Walik Salaam Alaikum Rahmatullah Bakar.